was my intent to finish it, but clearly I underestimated you. One would think I never learn. I made the same mistake with Azam when we first sparred. Despite being less than half my age, his strength was astounding. As is yours. Tis plain you have weathered considerable hardship. Far more even than your tales would suggest. It seems we have both learned much on our journeys. I dare say he has warmed to you. A boon to be sure. He never forgets his favorites and is ever eager to come to their aid. Quite a small place, lacking even the most basic equipment. The present may yield no clues, but we may yet try perusing the past. Have you done this before? It 
So you cannot control the power freely. Worry not. I shall assist you. Come and stand before me. There are two ways to see the past. The first entails peering through the walls of the soul in the moment a subject is recalling a memory. The second requires no subject and is instead a process of piecing together an event from ripples left in the ambient ether. As memories are etched upon the ether of the soul, so too are they etched upon the ether of the world. In this way can history be preserved. Such memories are given to fading, however, and can prove challenging to visit. But come, let us try. Close your eyes. fully functional and proceeding on course towards their respective stars. Estimated time to completion of survey is 108 cycles. End of status report. Severing connection with shared consciousness. Did you hear that, Hermes? All is well. <sighs> Yes. Good tidings at long last. Every step of the way, I've been reminded how little we understand creation. How the universe defies imagination. But soon we won't need to... speculate. We'll know the answers. What others live for. <laughs> Indeed. And we'll owe it all to you and your sisters. <laughs> I wonder what answers we will get. Whatever intelligent beings that exist out there are bound to be vastly different from us. Diverse in form and culture. Possessed of unique ways of thinking. Their conception of life and its purpose will be no exception. Completely and utterly unlike ours. Utterly unlike? How? <laughs> I have no idea. Yet whatever answers we receive, I will not dismiss them out of hand. No, I will think earnestly on them all and I will share them with our people, that together we may contemplate our own existence. Perhaps then our star will become a better place, not only for man, but for all life. Meteon, though I gave you wings to soar the heavens, I did not teach you how to walk the earth. So loath was I to bind another living being. In the course of your long journey, you will learn from those you meet, learn to walk and run and so much more. And when you return, older and wiser, we will have a celebration to mark your homecoming and coming of age both. Will there be apples covered in syrup? And how are you supposed to eat them? Hmm. Rather than food, perhaps... A flower. Yes. Upon your return, I will gift you a beautiful flower.
So, what is your opinion? As you say, that was hardly conclusive. Yet based on what we witnessed, I find it difficult to believe that they would deliberately seek to end all life. Be that as it may, we cannot rule out the possibility that they will play a part in bringing about the final days, perhaps unwittingly. In light of this, I propose that we reveal your tale to Hermes himself. If he does not wish for the final days as we believe, he may well join us in pursuing a solution. Then it is settled. Let us seek out our friend with all swiftness. It would not do to let such a pure soul be blackened by tragedy.
My apologies for keeping you waiting. I understand there is a matter you wish to discuss. Aye. A matter of the utmost gravity. If one can suspend disbelief. Go on then. Tell him what you told us. Who you are, and why you came. The final days. The phenomena observed during these star-encompassing calamities is likely the product of a dynamous reaction. And none is more versed in the applications of this energy than you, Hermes. I must stress that we do not believe you would desire such destruction. We come not to lodge accusations, but to beg your wisdom. And so, distressing though the exercise may be, I ask that you share with us your opinion on the matter on the assumption that our visitor's tale is true. Even you, Vena. As you say, the phenomena observed in the two calamities may both be attributed to Dynamis. Of note is the difference in its effect. In the first final days, it warped creation magics. In the second, it warped the people themselves. The key variable, I suspect, is the etheric density of the men of each age. As you know, ether, in essence, negates dynamis. Harboring high concentrations of ether, we ancients cannot readily manipulate dynamis nor be manipulated by it. Therefore, rather than ourselves, the Calamity affected our magics. In contrast, having been sundered, the people of the future are composed of but a fraction of our ether. Thus are they susceptible to the influence of Dynamis and its transformative potential. But that would explain only the mechanism not the cause. Though perhaps. What is it? Even should it be a hypothesis, we would hear it. Dynamis is an energy put in motion by feelings. Feelings for which there must first exist a source. A source to which the victims must be attuned. One that harbors the self-same negative emotions. Elsewise, it could not be the agent of such extreme change. So it wasn't the stagnation of the celestial currents. Someone, or something, is instigating the star's demise. So, we've a villain on our hands after all. Any idea who or what it could be? The celestial currents comprise the outermost layer of the star's ether, encasing it like a protective sphere. According to your tale, it was where the currents were weakest that the phenomena first manifested. If the inciting factor came from without a theris, then its effects would first be seen in those locations. Greetings. Can you hear me? Do not be alarmed. I mean you no harm. I wish only to hear your words, share your feelings, know your thoughts. May we please be friends. Meteon. What is it? 
executing scheduled tasks, suspending individual self and connecting to shared consciousness. Connection established. Commencing status report. Steady, Meteon. Steady. So scared. So lonely. The pain. It's too much. <laughs> Why? Why? Why do we... She's... gone? But how? She has altered her etheric density in order to blend in with her surroundings, an ability for avoiding confrontation. Most effective. Frustratingly so. I can't see her either. Not even a trace. Stay away. Please. This is wrong. My mistake! So please! Are you alright? In your mind? No. We only heard her speak the instant before she vanished. Of course. When communicating without words, Meteon also employs Dynamis. That will explain why you were able to hear her, when we could not. Then you are our best chance of finding her. Follow her voice and try to track her down. Hindered though we may be, let us split up and search as well.
Thank you. 